Well, I get so many comments on pre-authorization when charging an EV, and many of them seem to have the wrong information or not fully understand what's happening, that I decided to make this Q&A using real comments. My answers are always tried and tested in the field by me, recorded and photographed before I answer. Now, if I don't know, I'll always say either I don't know or this is my opinion. Now, for simplicity in this video, I will refer to pre-authorization as PA. Well, first a comment from Stephen Barrett and several others. How about an Octopus Electroverse review? Well, great idea, Stephen. There are more and more cards offering benefits these days. It's difficult to know what is worth having. I personally set one important criteria. It must be free. And Brian's suggestion is actually free. I have already just ordered an Octopus Electroverse card, so I can make no other comments at this stage about using it because it's not yet arrived. But it does seem to offer worthwhile benefits. Uh, one point charging, no contactless. The app has my chosen payment method, so I don't need to use any other cards. The app can find charges for me if I enter my card details. Only offers those that are compatible. It also shows which charges you can control from the app directly. Well, it all looks good, but the trial will tell all. Watch out for that video. Well, several of you have stated to use a credit card as it will not pre-authorise. Sorry, that's just wrong. It does, PA, as the screenshots show clearly. But Andrew and Keith are spot on. They suggest using a credit card as it has far better regulations built in. That's absolutely correct. And Andrew commented to use a credit card as it only PAs the credit, the credit that you have, not actual money in your account. Might be a good idea to see if you can get a credit card, even if the interest rate is high, clear it off at the end of the month, and the PA amounts don't matter, even if they linger for several weeks. Several viewers suggested that I had had a good experience with all PA releasing within seconds because I was charging in business hours. Well, it's never occurred to me at the time while charging, but it is a very valid point. So as usual, I got in my car and tried it out. 7pm at Darwin Services on the M65. Ionity 350 kilowatt charger and GridServe 50 kilowatt chargers, both PA released immediately. So no, it's not down to time. Brian ohm 2 hh said chargers should use a simply contactless reader and it wouldn't happen. But during my charging, I just had to go and get a quick McDonald's snack, use the contactless, and the correct amount dropped immediately into my pending payment file. I do check nowadays. It took two days to clear in the end, but well, it's no problem. But if the PA releases in seconds on completion, I see no difference. In both cases, the payment goes into pending and no hold remains on my account. Well, maybe this is a problem in our minds and needs no answer. Unless I had checked my banking app while actually charging, I would never have seen these fleeting PA amounts at all, just the final pending cost. Well, numerous people have told me about holds lasting weeks or days. The law is quite clear on this. If you've completed the tra transaction, the PA must be released. If it isn't, then ring the bank. They have a legal duty to cancel any payments that you request for a genuine reason. For example, a suspected fraudulent transaction, an ent entry that you simply do not recognise, a direct debit for an incorrect amount, or a charge that is invalid. Please ring your bank. I have spoken to Barclays, Halifax and Santander Banks and Barclay Card Help Desk, and they all said exactly the same. Check your app. Call us if you're not happy. Still on the subject of lengthy holds, in my trials, every single PA hold was released, but was accompanied with a release date. Most appear to be around eight days. This means that the hold will or should disappear on or immediately after that date, whatever else happens. So weeks or months of waiting suggests one of two things. Either the transaction has failed and needs to be removed via a phone call, or the company operating that account has a policy or practice that allows or encourages this practice. So in the latter case, just stop using them. As always, I welcome your comments. They provide me with a snapshot of what you experience out on the road day to day. 
I can only cover a limited number of charges, no matter how hard I try, so your comments are vital. Please subscribe so you can be notified when each new video is released. I suspect this subject is an ongoing issue with new data arriving all the time. Well, with a mass of comments from people having problems, I remain totally surprised that I haven't yet had a single problem, and I have actually gone out searching for one. Are these comments up to date? Could it be they happened years ago and just linger on in your thoughts? I would welcome actual examples of these problems, and I'll try to go there and try for myself. I have used brand new and older chargers with multiple networks at different times of the day and the week. Every single one has worked fine for me. Now, Duchy Piang, uh, what his name is, was one of the many to state the grid serve only EPA one pound. I said I would check and uh, now I have. GridServe do indeed PA only one pound on both motorway and non-motorway chargers, and so does Ionity. Roger Starkey is a regular commenter and asks why the other charger networks don't simply ask you-know-who to supply their chargers. Well, a great question, Roger. Still waiting for an answer, but I suspect it comes down to money and profit, i.e. they make no money at all offering terrific reliable chargers at rock-bottom prices. Unless any of you know any different. Old Man Tony comments about those who protest against charges at 79 pence per kilowatt hour. Now, I'm not going to tackle prices in this video, but we'll be launching a new video specifically on this subject very soon. As a quick reply, though, Tony states that if you can charge at home at ridiculously cheap overnight rates, then an occasional on the road session at five times the price makes little difference to the cost of running an EV over an entire year. I agree with your comment and your answer, Tony. A special mention for Box Full of Neutrals 8514. See, a whole video without mentioning. We want to thank you for watching our long cast. Dave takes it on. And if you like what we do, what we ask of you is to click that like and subscribe to follow along. Well, that's it for now. With all the driving and charging, yes, I am one of those who deliberately pays 79p when 20 feet away is a supercharger for 24p. I really would welcome financial support. Patreon offers you the chance to support me financially for just a few pound a month, and that will allow me to travel further afield and more often. Details of that down below. Also, a big thank you to Jonas, my oldest son. He not only assists me with filming occasionally, video editing and the branding, like thumbnails, but also is a talented musician. He edits a lot of my audio, and it is he who recently wrote the short song I use as the outro for my channel now. He also reads those comments, so let him know if you like his efforts. Thanks for watching. I'm Dave.